Karsten Champions League. This is Nimsh, I'm here with Raven, and we've just seen Stan Sivka beating Colento 3-0. Raven, did you expect that to, ha that to happen? Yeah, no, not, not at all, to be honest. Um, I think, like, a lot of these matches, because the players are so good, you expect really close, you know, like, three twos almost every game. But, you know, the one positive for Colento is he guarded the, the knowledge of his other two decks for the rest of the group stage. So he will actually face off against the loser of this matchup. But for now, we do have Sixto versus Dog. This is, this is going to be just as good as the last set. Absolutely. So this is the first match for them. This is still Group A, um, second match. And uh, the decks that they brought, well, I will not spoil that, but we see at the moment that we have Warlock versus a Shaman. So another Zoo, this time for Sixo. And the aggressive Shaman, the deck I really like. You love, see, I, I'm the opposite. I hate this deck, um, <laughs> but, I, but I respect its power. That's why I hate it so much. Um, really good start from Dog, though. I mean, this is one of the uh, one of the open hands you do want to see as the uh, Shaman player going on. The you know probably the key card in the in the deck actually in the the Trog. It's so powerful and going straight into another one drop, being able to follow up with Golem. Pretty insane. Yeah, it's absolutely great. So uh, you can deal damage, but on the other hand, there is a way with abusive uh, to deal with that trog early. But uh, still, it, it, this puts Dog in a really good position, and we can see in his hand already a Doomhammer and a Rockbiter. So if he uses Rockbiter er earlier, like if he uses it as a removal, fine. Doomhammer is still a great tool. But if he waits till turn six, he can actually deal ten right there. But for now, it will be well a bit of a minion battle. And uh, we see that dog is actually overloaded. So that ancestral knowledge, that n that's not the turn to play it. Yeah, it seems a little bit rough. You normally want to play ancestral knowledge when you have the lava shock in hand to follow up, and um, with lava shock the following turn, all the same turn to just clear off the uh, the overload. And it does look like he's gonna have to use the rock bite because if he decided to hold on to it for that extra damage later on, the, it might be too late by then. You know, you really do in these aggro mirrors. You really do have to battle for the board, and implosion is a good card for doing that with. Absolutely. That's why I said if he still has it, because in those matches yeah. versus Zoo. Uh, dog has to deal as much damage as possible early on, and oh man, there is another rock biter for him. So this means he will be able to play it. Well, boom hammer next turn, go four to face, and then he will have ten. If he gets something like a lava burst, he might just win on turn six. Yeah, and that's the power of this deck. Even when it looks like it's getting overrun, you've got so much burst that can come out. Especially with if you like doom hammers and sort of doesn't. You know, doesn't have lethal to help the following turn, then Ancestral Knowledge, the odds of you drawing into some burn are so high with this deck, it's like literally insane. But, but on Six hand, on the other hand has quite a big board built up. And a taunt. You know, taunt is cheating as a lot of people say. <laughs> and this Void Walker actually would deal 4 damage to Dog. Uh, overall, how much damage is there? There's 5 to 7 plus uh, 3 12, 12 damage, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna agree, <laughs> but yeah, there is. Oh, ooh! Oh man, Gormon! This is actually insane. <laughs> it will work. It will actually yeah. work. Uh, this is not. This is no lethal yet, unless you 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 can actually mortal coil one of your minions after the attack and then play Gormon. But it's still not enough. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be really good though, because as you said earlier, the Void Walker is actually huge. It's like a 2-3 taunt, doesn't seem like a lot, but when Doomhammer's in hand, it's going to be pretty good. Just to, uh, you know, you have to run something into that minion, and now Gormop being able to just destroy the totem golem. This is so much pressure that I don't actually think Dog can deal with unless he draws something crazy off the top for three mana. I, I think that's basically it. Just crackle the face and concede because you're facing a Zudek with Gormok. Oh man. Is insane, and that is also uh, showing off the power of implosion in these aggro mirrors. Being able to almost certainly remove a minion whilst at the same time generating your own is actually pretty key. And we saw that Dog didn't run any of the AoE spells that we've seen sort of drop in and drop out of the aggro shaman deck in terms of either lightning storms or in some cases even the elemental destructions. Yeah, that's right. And uh, let's talk about the lineup a bit. So, uh, well, we have another match uh, immediately. But overall, Sixo brought the Warlock deck that we know is Zoo. He brought the Rogue and Paladin. So for Paladin, it is a secret Paladin. We see the secrets already. And Dog, he brought uh, Warlock, Mage, and Shaman. So we've seen Shaman, this is a Warlock, and he previously, he was known from playing for playing uh, Demon uh, Handlock, but now it's a Zoo. 
Yeah, and as we sort of briefly mentioned earlier on, like a lot of people are actually playing Zoo at the moment. It's so powerful um, in terms of like the, the tempo it can generate. And then with, it's kind of funny actually, a lot of uh, players made decks based around Gormok, Sea Giant and the, uh, the Seeker. But then I think everyone started to realize that actually you can generate a pretty big board and then just use Gormok. You don't have to go all in on like the tokens with say oozes and things. And we're sure enough how good that is now with Dog. I mean he has a creeper that when it dies it's going to pop two 1-1s. The imp gang boss is going to summon tokens. It really does get out of hand pretty quickly. Do you think we're going to see some sea giants? Uh, it's tough. I don't think the deck actually needs them. Maybe it's like a one-off as a surprise factor. But in general, I think the deck's pretty, like fast enough to not really require them. On the other hand, though, six. So um, it's got a reasonable start. That true silver and um, being able to take out the gang bosses. That is one of the minions that's very scary for the secret paladin to generate those one ones. And you know, shredder, and then maybe a little bit later on the challenger kicking in. It's always nice to have that ready for turn six. Yeah, six so is in a really good position here with nice follow up on four, five, and six. And uh, Doug pick up the brown bronze viewed. So uh, he's uh, opting not to play it this turn because it will just die to uh, to the weapon. So he wants to uh, throw a bit more weapon fodder so that Sixo can actually kill something like a Dire Wolf this turn. And then he can follow up with, uh, well, maybe with Bran into Abusive, which means Abusive will buff a minion uh, plus four. Yeah, this is nice because, as you said, sacrificing Bran onto the True Silver just feels terrible. Ooh. Whereas having the Die Wolf, that is enough of a priority target to use the weapon, even though on paper it seems like a bit of overkill, a four attack weapon killing a 2 2, but it represents so much more damage that it's worth. He might even go Bran into uh, the Peddler now because getting two uh, Discovers off Peddler is actually really powerful. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely. The Dark Peddler is really great, especially if you're fighting for, for the board position. <laughs> Milham's Mana Storm! <laughs> okay, he does have the way to deal with this, but that would have been horrendous if he did it and just slammed Bran and it's like, oh, that 4-4 four, four out of the Shredder that just destroys my Legendary. Fine. <laughs> well, to be honest, Raven, there were a couple of cards that will deal with Bran um, as well, like even a 4-3 Succubus, right? Or a 4-1 yeah. Pirate, but yeah, Milham's was definitely them the best of them this is kind of nice from six so and this is where like having secrets in hand sometimes isn't terrible for the secret paladin because now dog has to sit and go okay this secret could be noble sacrifice avenge redemption or comp spirit in which uh, or even repentance if people are playing it in which you have to play around those in very different ways a lot of the time so you have to normally just commit and hope it's not the one that like ruins you. And he did play the coil there, and he found out that it almost certainly... Oh yeah, it certainly is Comp Spirit because he's played a minion, so it won't be Repentance. So yeah. gets away with it a little bit there, but now he'll know that the uh, the Competitive Spirit will buff these 1-1s one in a way that can clear Brando pretty easily. Which is... Um, well, it's great for Six though. For for Dog, he is uh, in a very good position, especially after the Mistress Challenger and Dr. Boom on 7. So for Six though, it seems like the easiest game of his life. And Dog struggles um, with with answers because this 2-2 two -two is just going to die to Noble Sacrifice. Uh, there is one, still one more, right? We've only seen one. Yeah, we've seen one. So uh, a very tough situation. Um, Dog will probably just have to go for, for Peddler into a card, um, into maybe Dark Iron Dwarf to, has, uh, to have the biggest minion on board and uh, not attack at all. Yeah, oh, it's really corruption. tough. Oh. <laughs> yeah, corruption's definitely something here. He can um, he can play that onto the what will be guaranteed the avenged uh, Mysterious Challenger. Just get one attack off, but it greatly reduces the uh, like the long term because it means that Dog doesn't have to commit too much into killing it. The only issue is he can corruption that you know all he wants, but when the follow-up's Dr. Boom, then you're still quite afraid. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really interesting because my initial thought of not attacking was without the corruption, right? But with corruption now, you, you kind of want to attack to deal with revenge as well on the same turn. So that was a, an interesting change of pace. Oh man, there's Tyrion for oh, turn my. eight. <laughs> So for all you secret paladin lovers, which I know there are many, uh, no sarcasm whatsoever, um, this is the perfect run of what you want from secret paladin. You want to go into challenger on a fairly steady board, into boom, into Tyrion, because your opponent, nine times out of ten, cannot answer one after the other three turns in a row. Sixo is saying he's sorry, but he isn't. He isn't sorry. He's laughing to himself. 
Well, Sixo is uh, dog is laughing at this because how can you even win versus this kind of setup? And uh, Sixo is taking game number two, having an amazing lead, two to zero. And just yeah, to remind I mean, you guys, Hearthstone uh, Champions League, ten thousand dollars prize pool. The first place takes five thousand, and we are playing Group A today. Two players will advance to top, top eight. These games are going so quick, Nim. So quick. Oh, I like so it. So locks in his rogue versus the shaman. So you've got to say like. You, uh, well, you'll tell me, but the Shaman's favored here, right? Any uh, hyper aggro, yeah. it's aggro kind, it's kind of like um, old face hunter versus uh, versus rogue, where exactly. where Shaman is just um, dealing damage from the very beginning, and then a rogue has to deal with the minions and kill the Shaman before he gets uh, burst down. But uh, well, it's tough. Yeah, and it's even it, I'd say it's even harder than uh, than face hunter used to be because. When you get to the point in the game, say like turn four or five onwards, you know every single draw from the shaman is like it could, can, could be a lava burst, a crack, or like so much damage. And the rogue doesn't normally have the mana to be able to deal with it because, as we said in some of the previous uh, in the previous set, where heal bot for five is actually you know really good five mana heal eight, but not if your opponent then just follows up with even more burst and that five mana was your whole turn. You can see how defensive Six has been now with the sap onto the golem just to slow him down as much as possible. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting matchup because, uh, well, not, not that interesting to watch in a way that I feel like Shaman has a great advantage, but if, if Rogue is able to pull it off, then it's really interesting. But overall, Rogue has no taunts, mostly, unless they play one such Belcher. They have no heals unless they play uh, a Farce here and maybe attack Healbot. Depends on the list, but they, they sometimes they don't play those cards. And then Rogue wants to win the, the, the board early and get the tempo advantage. But how can you get tempo advantage, advantage versus those minions? Like a 3-4 for 2 mana. Um, a, a, a dude with a divine shield. So it's, it's really hard. Yeah, it's a really weird matchup to watch from the Rogue's point as well. Because as we saw then, Sixo just played oil for 4 mana on turn 4. And it was the right play. You know, it seems so strange to watch him. Dog locking in the Doomhammer there. So much pressure. He's even going to tank the uh, Azure Drake just to get it off the board. You don't really want to leave Rogue, especially with spell power in terms of like the AoE potential and maybe another oil. Uh, Sixo is playing a Belcher though, like you said. So we'll see if that's going to be enough to actually hold on. There is the Earth Shock for the Belcher. So... Um, yeah, Sixo uh, getting lower, but he is uh, bringing the teacher. And uh, Dog, on the other hand, playing as a shaman. It's also um, interesting if he plays any AoE cards. Some shamans do not play any, and I I've seen lists with elemental distraction. Sometimes there is one lightning storm, but mostly on ladder. On ladder, people experiment with lightning storm. In the tournament mode, uh, people don't, don't run it, I feel. Yeah, it's definitely one of those like personal preference picks, isn't it? Um, look at this, and this is why this deck's so scary. And versus Rogue, so lethal. Just gone hit four for Doomhammer, two Crackles, Lava Shock, why not reset your Overload? So much damage, and especially as you said earlier, Earth Shock's in hand. So the only thing that will slow Dog down really is a heal, and we can see Sixo doesn't have that. Well, he's basically Sixo is basically dead this yep. game, so. Dog was able to take it with his aggressive shaman. There's how much mana after the overloads? Six. And a lava burst to finish things off. <laughs> okay. Crazy. I just burn your face. It's a two on. Yeah, so Dog taking the favored matchup there just to get the point on the board. Um, he does have to win with all his decks against Rogue, so might still be a bit of an uphill climb, but Sixo pretty much got steamrolled there as expected, because that matchup definitely isn't favored for the Rogue. But Raven, we talked uh, um, about it a bit before the tournament started. So you've mentioned that Rogue was popular at Assembly and uh, we casted it in Insomnia as well. What do you think is the stand um, of Rogue in the current metagame? Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. I think it's better in, in terms of tournament play than it is in a, on, like, say, Ladder, for example. But when it's really just about calling what decks your opponent's taking. Like, if you're expecting like Paladin and maybe some Priest, then Rogue really performs, so it's a good pick. But it's definitely one of the decks that you take if you're good at it. It's not something a lot of people normally just pick up and go, oh, you know, Rogue's good, I'll just play it. It does require quite a lot of uh, experience to pilot the deck properly, I'd say. Oh my god. <laughs> he got a 4-2 Argent Commander <laughs> with the portal. And Dog is actually playing the Temple Mage. It, this is a Temple Mage, right? Like, he just didn't get the early cards. Yeah, this is Tempo Mage. Um, you can 
pretty much tell by the, the portal alone almost tells. I mean, it could be mech, but we've seen zero mechs, and the mirror image is actually uh, pretty common, just to slow down the more aggressive decks and cause things to be a little bit awkward. But this uh, this is really nice. I'm really liking Temple Mage at the moment because uh, it destroys Druid so hard normally. But this is so awkward for six. So what is the? Uh, he can't. Uh, does he have to like evade and backstab the uh, commander? Do you really have to deal with the commander though? You maybe you can just go for um, a Violet Teacher turn somehow. Well, actually, if you go... oh, he could Violet Teacher. Oh well, now there's Entity, but he could still backstab Prep with this maybe. You can probably keep the four two on the on board. I think it's more important to to kill the Violet Teacher now. Uh, yeah, kind of tough leaving it up with Divine Shield though. It never feels great, does it? When you know that four attacks going to be traded for free. Yeah, but then dealing to damage normally is not a problem for Rogue. Um, we see that it might be a problem for Six at the moment. He doesn't have anything in his hand. Uh, but um, it forces a ping as well. So that's something, you know. Like on turn 5, Mage will want to attack the Violet Teacher. And then ping. So we'll only have 3 mana open uh, to play a card. <laughs> well, Arcan Intellect is that card. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough though. Because, I mean, Dog's really wanting to see the, uh, the Flame Wakers and some of the cheaper spells. Because, you know, when there's a board full of 1-1s one and you don't have Flame Wakers, Tempo Mage, it definitely feels bad. But you're right, Arcan Intellect fills out the curve pretty nice. He almost certainly is going to take that teacher off the board and goes into Water Elemental Fireball. So double is your Drake, Water Elemental. Um, quite sort of a, a more mid ranges version. I know some people have been playing some more like aggressive tempo variants. So it only shows that his hand was bad. Like, uh, <laughs> the Argent Commander saved him a bit because it's actually pressuring uh, Sixo in a way. But you want to have a Mana Worm, you want to have um, Apprentice. Flame Waker, and he just got the big curve. But uh, because Sixo's hand was uh, a bit iffy as well, that might serve Dog well. Yeah, he's doing okay. And this Water Elemental, getting the Water Elemental down, especially against a weapon class like Rogue, um, it is huge. Getting it down safely is key. So that's why we saw the Frostbolt on the Tomb Pillager there, because he couldn't just leave it up, because then it, it you know, his Warrior Metal dies without freezing the Rogue, and he's definitely going to uh, want to just freeze the Rogue and pretty much lock the hero power out of the game. And that's uh, probably what he's going to do, right? Um, you can... Arcan Intellect... Uh, well, okay, so his, he has Missiles and Apprentice. It's going so fast, though, but I was thinking about fireballing the 4-4 and pinging the 5-1, then going for face um, to lock the, the hero power, as you said. But Dog has yeah. a different plan here. What do you think about Tomb Pillager, though, overall? Like, it's a really cool card, and does it mean that Sixo will be playing one Gadgetson? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, it's uh, A lot of people experimented with it quite early on when it first came out, and it seems like it's just about worth worth the spot. Um, I know Life Coach has been playing a slight variant on Rogue, which is, feels a bit slower and just sort of slow and steady instead of any big combos. But Tomb Pillage is really nice just because the coin is so valuable. And um, the Gadget Zan, I don't think it means there will be a Gadget Zan. I think it just means like there's an option of the Gadget Zan there. I think Tomb Pillage is good enough on its own. All right. And uh, Doug being a bit unlucky with the missiles, uh, he really wanted to snipe that Tomb Pillager, with, but with so many targets. It didn't work. Also, killing uh, Azure Drake was one of the options for him. It didn't work, though. Yeah, definitely uh, a little bit unlucky there. The coin would be pretty nice just to get the deadly poison. And gonna go into... How big is this Van Cleef? Yep, that's a Van Cleef. Uh, a 10-10. Ten, ten, ten. Ten. Not bad. Not bad. And he even kills up the 3-2 with the oil as well. So um, that's looking pretty good. Dog has no option but to just Drake into something. And Mirror Image is definitely worth when he can ping the Drake as well. Dog plays so fast. So fast, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You got Conjurer though, so maybe with Conjurer he will actually pick up something to deal with this um, this Edwin. Uh, something like a Polymorph? Yeah, I mean, wait, is there anything else that could vaporize and kill the other two minions? <laughs> There's always potential for this crazy stuff when a wait, It's a free mana spell, right? No, this cover is spell, so a Polymorph... Yeah, is it's any spell, possible. yeah. Uh, Flame Lance, that's the name of that five mana card, right? That deals eight yes. damage to a target. You know, there's, there's definitely options, and I have been, I've had my Ragnaros flame lanced by a Conjurer's uh, spell before, so that was pretty rough. He has a fireball to deal with that Edwin right now, but still, yeah. maybe something small to to work with Antonidas, something like a uh, Froze Nova. Yeah, that'd be really nice for because a lot of the rogue damage is obviously minion based, which turns those oils 
Effigy's nice though. Yeah. Because... You can actually anti Nidus Effigy next turn, so you get the Fireball, you get the 5-7 body, and then you get another 7-drop afterwards. But speaking of 7-drops, that's one of the best ones, if not the best one in the game at the moment. For now, till rotation. But, yeah, till, uh... yeah, at this second in time. <laughs> But this is still a really good situation for Dog, uh, unless he gets a bad target. Oh, he got even a Fireball. So, not that it really matters. Or does it? it, it well, it almost forces 6 0 to. Um, well, 6 0 must be in a position now where it's like he either. Well, can he kill him? 7 8 9. Thank you. Depending on where the bombs go, he could kill him, but he doesn't know what that secret is. That's the scary part. So. Ah, okay, he's going to clear up and uh, eviscerate the Antonidas. He could run a bomb in first, but the issue is, if it's Counterspell or Ice Block, then he almost certainly... Well, he dies, right? Yeah, if, if that's an Ice Block, he's just dead. Ooh, that's a really good bomb. bomb. So, he, can he go for it now? That's uh, 11, 12, 13, plus 5, 18 damage. Yeah, that's, that's lethal right here, but he doesn't go for it. There we go, and it's the effigy 6 0. The slight no. smile and nod. Oh, it's another one! <laughs> he got a bad Antonidas! <laughs> what? Raven, what just happened? Now he still has to kill it. Do, so, do we not understand what effigy does? Resummon the minion? Did, have we misread effigy all this time? Well, oh my god, that's insane. If you're a dog, it probably does it. <laughs> and now dog has two fireballs, so he has 13 points of damage, and 6 0 is close to a <laughs> he yep. lethal oh. hand. He knows that. That was so close for him. Oh my god. And this is the problem with the cards like Conjure create so much confusion when like a secret's played. It could be any of them. If it was Ice Block, he would have been dead. If it was Counter Spell, he couldn't have killed him. You know, there's so many options and it ended up being Effigy uh, and generating another Antonidas. Like, that's actually just madness. But Doug is not out of the woods yet. Uh, he has to clear those minions and there's double sprint. So he's uh, in a good position, but it's not over. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've seen a mirror entity, right? Already, because he's summoned the teacher. Yeah. So we'll see what if dogs run in any other secrets, because some temple mages actually run like one entity, one counter spell, or two entities, or you know, the, there is a few variations knocking about. So this scientist is actually going to do some work if Six or can't finish the game up quickly. So Sixo doesn't know that, uh, that there is a fireball in Dog's hand because he did draw into it and he did cast uh, Antonidas fireball. So he's going to kill the mana, um, the mana worm, and then 15 damage is uh, is a lot. It's actually yeah. a second fireball would win the game, but Ooh. oh man, he got the if he runs one of each, that's heartbreaking, because now the scientist is, is a two-two with no no uh, additional effect. The counter spell is really good though, but six is going to be able to burn it with that coin he got from the pillager. Uh, yep, that's true. So uh, right now. Dog can just ping face and hope he gets the second fireball. This is going to be a little bit rough for Dog, so I'm pretty confident Six so is going to uh, test the the, uh, the secret, especially he saw that it came from his deck. So it probably isn't, you know, it's not like the Conjurer secret where it could just be anything. It's going to be Counter Spell or NT a lot of the time. And there's the Sharp Sword Oil, and that looks like it's going to clear it up. Yep, this means that Sixo takes the game and takes the match as well, winning 3 to 1 versus Dog. That second Antonidas was hilarious, but not hilarious enough to, to take the game. And Dog is thinking, like, what just happened? It's yeah, that was definitely crazy. I mean, it, it looked like Dog was in such a good position for so long, but I think Sixo being able to keep the card advantage, because when Tempo Mage starts having to top deck, it becomes very difficult because you you are top deck in certain cards like you know a two two in scientist or you know a mana worm some low impact cards are, are there especially after you've seen Antonidas himself and uh, one of the conjurers for example. Absolutely. So now this means that Sixo will play versus Stanislaw Sivka in the winners bracket of this group, and one of them is going to advance to the top eight um, finals, where the other will have to play versus the winner of Colento versus Dog. Colento versus Dog, I believe, might be next. And uh, the loser of that will be eliminated from the tournament. But for now, Raven, we're going to jump into a short break. And after that, we'll back with more Hearts in action.